rolling. And whenever you want. Hello, I'm Eric St. John Foti, and today I've got a very special guest. Everyone's interested in natural health, and we have one of the leading osteopath practitioners here with us today. And it's a great pleasure to welcome Lynn, and you're one of the leading ones here in Felixstowe. Where do you practice? Um, I couldn't say that I'm a leading osteopath in Felix, oh, so I can say yes. that I'm a registered osteopath yes. in Felix, though. Um, and I practice in Victoria Street at number 34 in the Felix Doe Clinic of Osteopathy. But there's a tremendous interest in it now, isn't there? But I get confused sometimes, I must confess. You know that you've got uh, physiotherapy, chiropractice. What is the main difference in it? Um, well, the main... Well, it's a very complicated question. <laughs> Uh, osteopaths and chiropractors have very similar philosophies but over the years we've diversed slightly um, and on the whole chiropractors tend to have shorter appointments and just do manipulations the, the crack sound clickings that you hear about mm. and osteopaths on the whole again tend to do more articulation or wiggling of the joints and massage perhaps ending with one or two manipulations Having said that, you could take 200 osteopaths and 200 chiropractors and there'd probably be 50 of each that would work the same. Yeah. But certainly myself, I do um, at least a half an hour of sort of massage and articulation and I end with just a couple of manipulations. Yeah. And that tends to be the main difference. We do yeah. longer appointments. Yeah. Um, but uh, one of the things that's always drawn me towards osteopaths is the practices to deal with the body as a whole so they're not just treating individual bits it's the whole body and I think that's awfully important is that right? I mean, well certainly as an osteopath I like to think I treat holistically so if yes. someone comes in with neck pain yes. I want to look at their whole back yes. and if their pelvis isn't level then I will perhaps want to look at whether they've got flat feet and advise them mm. maybe on some podiatry I, not to do it personally but send them to a podiatrist yes. um, it may just be that their pelvis is out of alignment and we mm. need to work on that at the same time. So if they come in neck with neck pain, I will work on their neck, but I will also be working on their whole yeah. posture so that, I mean, it's like fixing the roof if the foundations are broken. Yeah. You know, you need to get the whole thing right. Yeah. So, yes, yeah. I like to believe so that we really are looking at the whole body yeah. and getting the whole thing to function um, in yeah. a good way to support them so yeah. that this isn't something that keeps coming back that's another that's thing right, yeah. you know you could get the neck better but if you don't resolve the issues underneath mm. it the pivotal function of the spine or the pelvis it will come back a few yeah. months later yes yeah. mm. this, this is a sort of a holistic treatment so definitely the holistic the main thing mm. and what sort of age group do you ch treat I think the youngest person I've treated was a week old. A week old baby. And goodness, I think goodness. the oldest person I've treated was 98. 98. But I'm looking to beat that if anyone out there feels that. Well, you're beating <laughs> it with me practically. So. But anyway, it's a wonderful record. But what can you do to a small baby? I mean, it's, uh, what sort of things do you have to treat in a small baby? Well, sometimes they have digestive problems, wind and things, oh, which see. quite often is caused by the diaphragm being tight or neck muscles being tight because of the birthing process. Oh, I see. Well, so if you can interesting. relieve some of those issues... Um, oh, that's worth now. I don't think many people know that. And, and quite a few a people come in if, if, to check, um, have the baby checked over in case it's, if it's got a funny shaped head after the birthing process. And, yeah. and uh, so just take out the strains that that's caused. Yes. You know, whether they've been born by C-section and then to the baby, that's quite a lot of shock. Mm. Or whether they've come through the natural process, which obviously is quite a strain not only on the mother but the baby too. Yeah. A good check over is worthwhile and, as yeah, I say, can right. save digestive problems, wind, etc. And what about expectant mothers? I think there's a lot you can do to help them. I do see quite a few expectant mothers mm. who have sacroiliac pain, so pelvic pain oh, or back pain during pre well, pregnancy what? as their body changes, obviously, with the, the growing baby. Yes, it's wonderful to know that somewhere they, these, these people can go with their problem. And, of course, the elderly, you must help a great deal because they're always suffering in some way or another. And I, I, from my own experience, I know what a great help it can be. I mean, do you, what do you do find is the main, most common f uh, ailment that the elderly come to you with? Probably the most common is low back pain yes. from wear and tear. Yes. But also, I treat quite a lot of hips and knees and shoulders. But mm. but low back pain is the main thing. Wear and tear is generally um, os uh, osteoarthritis, mm. and it could be that either they've got, say, if it's in the back crumbling um, discs or in the knees the cartilage is wearing out etc or the hips mm. but a lot of the actual pain people suffer is the muscles which are struggling to balance the body around mm. that problem 
And so quite often massage and articulation, giving mm. that joint some space, will take away a lot of the pain. I can't mend the cartilage mm. because, it, you know, I'm, I'm not quite into miracles. No, but no. The, uh, the massage and articulation can, in a lot of cases anyway, help a lot. Yeah. So just because you've got arthritis, it's not necessarily the end of the world. And we can quite often stave off hip replacements or knee yeah, uh, operations yeah. for a lot longer by getting the muscles balanced. Yeah. Because if you're one side of the knee muscle, say, is pulling more than the other, mm. um, it, it will wear out quicker. So mm. at least if you get things balanced, functioning properly, go yeah. back to the holistics of the of the body yeah. and things function better, yeah. then the wear and tear might um, ease off a little bit. Yeah. Well, know? that's wonderful news. And I know that in America, an osteopath is the same qualification as a medical doctor. And in this country, it's becoming more or less the same. It's becoming to be recognised far more than it was. Well, since 1993, we've been registered, yes. and we do a four-year medical degree. Do you? But yes. obviously, I'm not there to diagnose things that a doctor would do. No. I'm mainly there to deal with musculoskeletal yes. issues. Yes. But um, since 1993, we have been a registered body. We are governed yes. by law. The public has, um, you know, yes. protection, and um, they know that everyone is qualified to a certain standard. Yes. Well, that's so important. And tell me, I shouldn't really ask you this, but if somebody comes to you, is it going to be hideously expensive? Or? Well, the first visit, which is usually an hour to an hour and a half, depending on how complicated a medical history mm -hmm. that person has, because we like to be very thorough and know what's gone on in the past, because you never know what pain someone's going to come in with. You could come in with me and say, oh, I've dug the garden, I've got lower back pain today. Mm -hmm. You could come in next week and have similar low back pain, think it's the same, and it could be referred, say, from the mm -hmm. kidneys. So mm -hmm. it's always good to know a full medical case mm -hmm. history. Um, and that first visit is £40 oh, well, for that's me. How reasonable. And yes. then any ongoing appointments are £36. Gosh, well, that's, that's remarkable. Now, if somebody wants to take advantage of this, and I know lots of people will, how do they get in touch with you? Well, they can ring me on Felix Doe 284284. 28428, that's a nice easy <laughs> yeah, number. Yeah, nice easy is. number. To, yes, uh, yes. My cheesy line is 284284 yeah. when you're feeling really sore. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't need to be referred by a doctor or anything first. No, that's very useful. Um, I can um, see you even if you're claiming via insurance, and next, unless, you're, unless you are claiming via AXA, PPP, or Booper, and then you do have to have a GP referral. Okay. But, but the general for public can general just public who just want to come along and pay for themselves or people on some of the other insurance companies, yes. I'm, I'm advertising for them here, um, <laughs> like Simply Health, HSA, yes. Norwich Union, who just need a receipt, yes. can come direct to me first as oh, well. That's good. Now, I'm very impressed with your calmness and happiness. <laughs> now, I understand it's partly because of some of your beliefs. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Or uh, um, Well, I'm a Buddhist, which... Yes. I'd like to say is a philosophy of yeah. life um, and what I believe in is loving kindness. So mm -hmm. I try and operate with that basis, what I would call a right livelihood. So therefore, for the fees that we've already discussed, which I believe is an honest um, fee for what I do, the yeah. length of time I give yeah. for the study that I've done, I like to treat everybody with respect, with kindness, with compassion yeah. and do the best for them that I can in the fewest number of treatments. Well, that is exactly how I felt about it. That's why I wanted to bring it in. It's a loving kindness. Oh, thank you. I yeah. don't want to upset people over religion because no. as a Buddhist with loving kindness, I'm, I have no problems with anybody else's religion, so yes. hopefully they wouldn't have mine. Well, and technically, Buddhism isn't a religion it's anyway. It's a philosophy. It's a philosophy, that's But, right. um, yes. you know, I'd, I well, wouldn't want people to worry that um, no, I'm, no, I think I'm any a, stranger than I look. <laughs> it's, the loving, it's the loving kindness that counts, and that's what it's all about. It's been a great pleasure seeing you, Lynn. And I hope you'll let a lot of people coming. And thank you very much for looking at this. And I hope you'll all go along with your aches and pains <laughs> to Lynn and she'll solve them for you. Well, thank you for inviting me here to Eric today, Eric. It's been nice to come and chat to you. That's been a great pleasure. Thank you so much, Lynn. Thank you.